driving tourism and economic development. The role of integrated resort casinos in Asian destinations. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I was up here a little while ago. This is a little bit more of a, not a serious sort of topic, but a, but a, but a great topic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the panel introduce themselves, give, them, give you a bit of background on, on you know, who they are and, and what they've done, and then we'll roll into the, the topic. So, ladies first. Hi, my name is Manita Lau. I'm the Vice President for the Business Solutions and the Premium Marketing for Okada Manila. And um, previously, I, I opened up Venetian Macau and also um, open up COD Macau, help in opening up COD Manila and also Studio City. And the last opening that I have is the Okada Manila over here, up until now, thank you. Hello, my name is Angel Sueiro. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of PH Resorts. We are a public traded company in the Philippines developing integrated resorts. Uh, previous because of working with PH, I've been developing this type of facilities, or gaming-related facilities, gaming and hotel-related facilities in around more than 20 different countries. So, yes. Hello. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is José Carlos Matias. I am the CEO of Project Asia Corporation, which is a publishing house of uh, Macau Business Magazine, which is our flagship publication alongside Business Intelligence and Macau News Agency. Um, I've been based in Macau for 20 years. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. So, driving tourism and economic development, the role of the integrated resort casinos in Asian destinations. So, I'll start with what is, what is an IR? So, the integrated resort, the IR term, I mean, the IR has been around for a long time, right? But Vegas was Vegas. No one really called it an IR until we got to Asia and then we built these Macau sort of leading the way and built these massive, massive resorts and then the, the, the term IR starts popping up and now these days it's everywhere. If, if a market's opening up, it's, it's going to be an IR development or is it big enough to handle an IR? So I'll ask the panel, each of you, what, is, what does an IR mean to you? Um, let me first. Ladies Thank first, you. always. Um, I ask me actually, um, if you go with the definitions of the dictionary, it is the entertainment center. Everything is in one brick. For example, casino, hotel, retail, um, even conventions is going to be in one brick. Um, to, uh, to me, IR is an, a place for the family to come together. It doesn't matter if you have a kids or um, Young, uh, young kids, um, adults, and even the elderly that can enjoy themselves in one complex. That is the IR to me. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely the, the definition. No, I will add the financial context also. No? For me, an IR is a place where somebody can spend their disposable income. I mean, you, you got a budget, obviously, for, for primary needs, no? for, for your house, for your your kids' education, things like that. But then you have disposable income, no? the money that doesn't go into there. No? So that's the kind of revenue we want to attract. And obviously the main generator is gaming. I mean, we sure. use the IR no? to try to cover that work, but at the end of the day, the main generator is gaming. I mean, as you said, it's conventions also, it's uh, retail, no? it's F&B, it's grooms, no? it's the fifth wall that we have now, no? it's the online. No? So all that, all those uh, venues where you can spend money, this is possible income, for me is what is being represented by an IR. Yeah. Agree with that? Well, <laughs> thank you. On top of uh, what uh, Marida uh, and, and, uh, and Angel said, uh, of course, I, I will talk uh, as an observer, as someone from the media industry, uh, not from specifically the gaming uh, and IR industry. Uh, so, on top of that, I'd like to highlight the following. Uh, uh, you know, when you look at the official statements and press releases of the Macau SAR government, uh, they no longer mention normally gaming operators or gaming concessioners. They mention the integrated resorts, concessioners and operators. Because that actually has a big focus on the role of IRs in the diversification of the economy. So, I would add to this discussion the more political approach or politically correct approach or politically acceptable approach by uh, highlighting 
IR instead of, uh, you know, strict to sense or hardcore gaming resorts. That's a very good point. I've never been politically correct. So at the, <laughs> well, the reason why everyone is in a market is gaming, right? Like whether we want to talk about it or not, but Macau, I moved to Macau. We opened Macau because of gaming. And then gaming developed. And then no one really knew how well it was going to go and it went very well. And then, then that allowed, you know, the gaming operators to build bigger resorts and bigger whatever. And it's the same in the Philippines. And gaming's been around in Asia forever. Genting have are one of the oldest gaming operators in Asia. They've been around for nearly over 50 years more. They built an integrated resort before they even knew they were building an integrated resort. So... I think gaming is the driving factor of it, but I think it's really important to, to identify what you've said, that if you fast forward from where Macau is, now you've gone from a, sleepy, a sleeping fishing village that opened up to gaming, and let's be real, it was just about gaming, and then when they got it open, it went absolutely crazy. And, you know, visionaries like Sheldon Adelson, who went out onto the Kotai and built something that people thought he was crazy about, all of a sudden helped lay the foundation for the IRs. And now we're at a situation in Macau where they've just renewed the concessions, like you said, and it's, you don't even talk about... I was in Macau the other week and I was talking to the, the gaming guys and it was almost like, shh, don't talk about gaming. It's like Voldemort. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's like now it's, but it's, you can understand why the government wants to reposition Macau as a tourism destination and, 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 and that's perfectly acceptable. But now talking about that, so what is the, beyond the gaming, we know we've built the IRs and the families are coming in, but beyond the IR itself, what's the, the tourist, what's the tourism driver and what's the economic development and benefit outside of the IR? Because I think that's important. The IR comes in to a, to a region, it gets built, there's true economic value in that. But what else, what happens to a place like Macau or a pl even Manila? If you look at Manila, how Manila's developed in and around the IRs. Clark's going through the same thing. Phnom Penh in Cambodia. I mean, that's an IR, you could, you could argue, or it is. I'll argue for them, it's an IR. So, and that's what's that done for the tourism sector, for flights coming into, a, into the country? I mean, can, let, let's, what, what does the panel think about that? Um. Let's look at Macau back before the IR come up. Um, we only know about Lisboa Hotel. That is where the, the oldest legendary gaming over there. So when Venetian came and then um, opened up their, um, their properties over there, we attract more of the... Because if you look at people that go to Macau previously, we all label them as gambler because that is what we know why they go there. However, nowadays when you go to Macau or even come to the Philippines right now, it's hardly to tell that uh, you're the gambler or you are come here to entertain yourself because we do have this all IR that I said, incorporate all the um, non-gaming um, factors in it. So it's really the, the purpose of coming to the, um, to the countries is different from before. We enjoying both gaming and non-gaming side of the um, tourism. Sure. Uh, I also believe that you, in the IRs help to raise the quality standards. Um, at the end of the day, the revenue that the casino brings in allows you not know, to do investments that will, you know, will be impossible to do in other ways. Yeah. You know? So that's, that's one of the biggest impacts. You, know? you can have a lot of small hotels, you can have a lot of small malls, you know? but again, when you have the backup you know, of the revenue of, of a casino, of the gaming, you can plan a different scale. You know? So I, I, I think that's probably the biggest, one of the biggest yeah, economic impacts. That's a really impacts. good point. Well, yeah. well uh, I think when it comes to what could be like a virtual cycle of the contribution of IRs to the overall economic development. It's interesting to know that, the, for instance, in the case of Macau, when we had uh, the new uh, gaming tender, we, we jokingly, we would just make this joke, oh, this is the non-gaming tender or the non-gaming commission because it was about uh, granting 10 year, new 10-year concessions to the operators, but the whole talk was about non-gaming investment in non-gaming projects. So if to get a picture of the situation, you know, according to some estimates, if we look at pre-COVID 2019, 
uh, it would be nine to one, uh, the revenue generated by IRs, nine gaming, one non-gaming. However, if you look at the investment pledge that was made by the newly renewed concessionaires, it's the reverse situation. Is nine to one, nine out of the um, 14.8 billion US dollar commitment made by the six uh, gaming operators, 90% is allocated to non-gaming and 10% to gaming. But what is non-gaming? We got a shopping list uh, in the tender requirement, international tourism, mice, entertainment, sporting events, art and culture, health, tourism, uh, themed amusements, gastronomy, community tourism, maritime tourism, it's about entertainment. It's about also uh, like having some sort of uh, diversification, but it's more of a vertical diversification where gaming and tourism play the key role than to push forward a diversification, but it's a diversification that, that stems from the competitive advantage that we already have. So really we're saying, you know, the role of an IR is to come into a market, take that commercial risk, build an establishment, make it profitable, and then really what we're saying is that an IR's role for tourism and economic development is number one, branding. So it, it allows a jurisdiction to have a stronger branding because that brand association with that organisation perhaps is stronger with what was there before. And I also like the point of, of quality. And you're right, the, the ability for gaming and, you know, for casinos to be able to build quality offerings around entertainment, whether that's a small theatre or a big theatre, or be able to bring in talent to, to perform. And Macau's a classic example. I mean, if you look at what Macau, you know, the non-gaming, uh, I suppose, the, what, what they had to commit to in non-gaming, it, it's huge. I think it's, it's nearly $13 billion over... over um, 10 years, which is huge. Now, that couldn't have been done without the success of gaming, without the risk of everyone going in there first. So the IRs have done their job. You know, They've built a new industry or built multiple new industries in Macau. They've made it well known on the map. They've provided really good quality establishments to be able for that economy to start diversifying. I mean, Macau's always talked about diversifying. It's extremely difficult to diversify when you're a casino town, but now there's legislation and there's a real push to it. You can see it diversifying. Philippines is a little bit different because it's bigger and it has a lot more to offer, to be honest, than Macau. I mean, there's a lot more here, and but you know, there's still the IRs have played a really important part here to put certain areas on the map. And that's happening in Manila, that's happening in Clark, it's happening in Cebu. There's a lot of areas around um, the Philippines now that are being, have a bit more branding power, influencing airlines to go there. So they're, they're some of the other things that IRs can bring. Okay, so if we, in terms of economic development outside, what, what are the other economic developments that IRs can bring? Not necessarily for the organisation that the IR itself, but what, what, what do governments expect or should expect? I think um, more on the, the IR, can, what um, doesn't uh, it bring in tourism, but it also bring in the, um, the development of the cities and the countries. Um, the, the new idea, new technologies also come in. Look at today's um, events. Sure. We all have all these new technologies that bringing in and why they chose Philippines to display all this te new technology because they thought Philippines do have this ability and also potentials to develop all these new technologies That's to come. one of the best markets for sure. Correct. So those are the outside econo economy or the financials that IR can produce. This is also the development of the society and also e economy of the countries. I, I think also the IRs, they, they become catalysts no, for the transition of cities from one particular uh, city model to another one. I mean, we are talking before, no, let's think about Vegas. No? Uh, you know, it was, it was not 
driven by the government. It was not a regulatory move, but move a Vegas move no, from being a pure gambling destination, yeah. what we have now, no, that 50 percent of the revenue comes from something else. No? Obviously, Macau is a very particular case no, because the low density of gaming opportunities in Asia. No? But I think gaming, oh, sorry, integrated resource play an integral role into that. No? Like I have this city, this city lives under this model, and it's going to transition into a different model just because of the integrated resource. Uh, Metro Manila could be a great example. Nobody will be thinking a few years ago no, uh, of Manila as a major tourism destination. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. No? And now, now it is. There's I enough mean, product here, there's enough. Exactly. Yeah, there's enough you know, so, and, and then everything starts moving around. Let's go to the top of the scale. Let's go to yeah. Singapore. No? Yeah, I mean, now you got the F1. You got the Taylor Swift concert, for example. Yeah. No? You know that you have nine days that it's impossible to get a ticket. Yeah. No? But at the same time, where was the seed of all that? Could be all this happening if you don't have a Marina Bay? I doubt. No, I seriously yeah. doubt. No? So I think that that's one of the key parts of the IRs no? that help into this transition no? of series no? into what actually are into something it else. It encourages others, right? So they go in, let, and other people develop in yeah, and around exactly. that. becomes like little cities that attracts bigger and better entertainment. Yeah, so... Yeah. That's the ripple effect of, of IRs, providing a, a comprehensive holistic experience uh, in terms of branding of, of, of a destination, uh, upgrading the quality, and you can see that happened in Macau, is happening here uh, and across the region. Of course, we have Vegas as our uh, you know, original reference. So uh, also uh, in terms of procurement for SMEs, I think it's really important. I think governments would want to see the IRs being engaged. Like when you talk about corporate social responsibility, of course, charity and uh, you know and ESG is really important. Uh, you know, it, it, allowing you know in terms of procurement policy of uh, acquiring goods and services with uh, you know in the local um, um, ecology of the SMEs is really important. And also nurturing startup companies, we can see this also happening yeah, here. Sure. So all of that is really important, in addition, of course, to the uh, awesome and handsome amount of money that the government <laughs> collects uh, on GGR, so it's, of course. Yeah, so, it's good. so educating people, yeah. providing new career paths, providing the whole framework. So we've talked it up, it's fantastic, IRs are great. What about the negatives? Like, what are the negatives of an IR? Like, if you flip it on its head and say, we've just talked it up, we're all in it, but I mean, w w what is, what, what are some of the pitfalls of, of developing IRs in a, in a country? Um, <laughs> tricky well, one, I know. It's very be tricky careful, one. Be careful, be careful. Yes, has, think carefully before saying. I know, I know. Well, I think it's more on the... It's opened up a lot of opportunity to, um, for, the, for the native to have a selections or choice or places to go in and addicted to gambling. Yeah, definitely. So that would be the pitfall on this. So, so more gaming means more potential people who need yes, sort even of protection though, and yes, introducing people that perhaps co weren't gambling correct. and now gambling. It's so that's legally a, introductions. Sure. Okay. Even though we do, every country do have illegal gambling underground and yeah. all that. Um, there's no, there's no um, questions to that. But this time is legally allowing you to go in. So that's a negative, but I can see a guy in the audience, Earl Hall, who's <laughs> working extremely hard about protecting people right, yes. in the industry. So I suppose it's a negative, that could be a negative as an IR comes in, it does expose more people, but it also allows people like Earl and his organisation, more technology to come into play True. to provide better yes. protection. So it's a negative, but more professional people are involved exactly. in yes. potentially you know, offsetting that. Correct. So negative, but not. So that's, that's positive. I think yes. you did very well there. I, I think the IRs at the end of the day, they, they bring disruption, no? they, they bring change. No? And, Obviously, I believe that at the end of the game, it's a positive change, but during the transi transition period, 
there's going to be winners and losers. No? Yeah. So let's say if I'm on a small gaming operation no? and now next door to me I have an integrated resort with a thousand machines and 200 tables, I'm going to disappear. So correct. No, I mean, that's that, in that transition period, no? and you can apply that to a lot of different components of AR. No? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to have the best mall in town or I'm going to have the best retail experience in town. I'm going to have probably the best event space or one of the best event space. So for some of the, let's call them smaller players before, no? that, that will have an impact. No? So what I, what I think is in that transition period, it will be inevitable no? that some of yeah. these small business will suffer. Like you said, there's got to be there's winners and there's got to be some losers, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, uh, subscribing all, all of that you've said, our panel uh, speaker said, I mean, I would say, in terms of winners and losers, uh, you can see, for instance, that we are witnessing an uneven recovery pattern. Let's say, for instance, the situation that I'm familiar with, which is Macau, where you have the you know tourism recovery taking shape. Um, you know, the economy is coming back, but you know the IRs are a magnet, and the uh, you know small businesses, uh, like you know, it's it's really. Uh, it, it, it trickles down, but not to the extent that one would expect. And there's a bit of some frustration, especially those, uh, uh, you know, in the catering industry or some, you know, in, the, in some of those supermarkets or small businesses in residential areas, not in tourist spots. Another flip side, I'd say the ecological footprint and the urban impact of of, of, of course, a mammoth scale yeah, uh, uh, that's properties. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, from my experience from Macau, I mean, I think Macau overall has been very positive, but, you know, I moved to Macau in 2006, there wasn't much there, and then it built up yeah. very quickly and I have a lot of local staff. And if you asked, at times you'd ask the local staff, is, is Macau better now or better before all this? And most of them would say better before because it was slower yeah. and they could take their time and they knew what they were getting. And I think... Although there's huge economic benefits in Macau, so people are getting paid more, they're getting educated more, yeah. there's more opportunity, you've got to be careful what you, what you yes, wish for yes. sometimes because it opens a Pandora's box. There's always a trade-off. Of, of course, course but, but and you don't know that. Like it's impossible, it was impossible to know what yeah. Macau was going to do until Macau yeah. did what Macau did. And, and so it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of people, I think overall... The economic benefits, the dr driving tourism and the economic development are very, very positive for uh, many, many reasons. But there is a downside. But, you know, again, you can't please everyone, I suppose. Um, all right, we're winding down time. Is there anyone who wants to ask a question? I don't think there's been a question asked the whole day, is there? No? Kylie, you want to ask a question? Come on. No? That's my wife in the back. I'm just trying to get her. What, what, what are we having for dinner tonight? Yes, 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 yes. No? All right. We've got two minutes and 40. What, um, oh, let's wrap up. Get final comments on, on this topic. Um, having an IR actually to, uh, for me, is a very good start to any um, underdeveloped country because that is the place where it draw the brand to that country that would call people to go and visit. But is IR being effective in a already developed country? That is a question. That's that a good like, point. Yeah. I, I, if you go into an underdeveloped country, make, exactly. a, make the commitment like, big enough to yes. be an IR to get the benefits. Correct. Don't because just open gaming up. The impact might yeah. be better. That's a really, really the, good point. In the underdeveloped countries rather than a developed country. Yeah, that's a great point. Oh, we're getting claps here. This is amazing. I, I believe the, and I ask, we already got a quite a stable business model. No? So the question is what's next? I mean, uh, what work? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or even now, it doesn't necessarily have to work for a new generation of customers, yeah, no point. clients. No? Again, look at this event. No? I mean, yeah, we have like, absolutely. I don't know how many. I, know, I think there's about a million exhibitors. Correct, and, but all of them are not land-based. Well, most yeah. of them are no, not land-based. It's, land -based. it's so awesome. That's what we, I guess, on the, on, on the industry have to think about. No? I mean, we've been working under a business model that is a fantastic business model, yeah. proven work, but that, doesn't mean that it will still work yeah, a good, in, in the next... Well, well, the Philippines is a great example again. This yeah. is why we're here with so many different suppliers and operators. 
different verticals, which is amazing, right? It's, yeah, it's great. We need to embrace change and we need to embrace innovation and we need to be always thinking about how to make our product available to different demographics. Yeah, to the, it's to very the good point. Yeah, good, good, good point. I mean, um, in, in, in Angle, I'd say, uh, you know, being able to keep up the space with, uh, you know, adjusting to the new, the new patterns of consumption and uh, experiences that you need to provide to the younger generations, to the new demographics, to, to be able to do it, uh, to bring in innovation, allow for that. And I guess what I can see here uh, is really exciting, really, really interesting. I'm learning a lot um, uh, this uh, couple of days already in Manila. Uh, and of course, then you have uh, IR plus AI, and I think it's gonna be exciting. Very much so. All right, that runs us out of time. So I'd like to thank the panel. Thank My everyone pleasure. for listening and I will not be back for another moderation. <laughs> I will, you don't have to listen to me again.